Welcome aboard, Bart. Uh, we're glad to have you here, and I'm impressed with all your credentials. Thank you, Dr. Neal. I hope that I can learn from every opportunity I get with you, and I hope you don't mind all the questions I'm going to be asking you. No, that's fine. You know, that's what we're here for, to help you learn. And, um, you know, I'm thinking we should probably talk caseload because we got to get going here. But um, we give everybody about 15 on their, their workload. Is that going to be too much for you? No, when I interned at the free clinic, I was juggling about 30 patients, so that shouldn't be a problem. Okay, and we're going to stretch you out slow because we're really about quality care for our patients. I want to stretch you off with one that's kind of baffling to me. Uh, the police brought this guy in who says he's from the year 2095. Yeah, this is really a baffling case because he seems normal in every way, even his psychological profile checked out. Everything checks out. He's all right in the head. There's nothing wrong with him. Yeah, nothing wrong with him. And, you know, when you think about it, how do we know someone's not from the future if they're completely normal? I mean, there's, he's not wearing any weird clothes. He doesn't have any weird devices. I mean, how do you tell he's not? Does he have any ID or any way of uh, identifying him or anything like that? No missing report, nothing? Nothing. You know, he said he left his ID in the future. Uh, he's a common worker. He said they use eye recognition, too. And so there's, there's nothing that we can prove. And, so it's just kind of a weird, baffling case for us. Tell you what, Bart, I'm not going to really tell you any more about this guy because I want you to read his file. You're probably going to meet him this afternoon anyways, and we'll compare stories later to see if his uh, story is pretty consistent. Yeah, sounds good. I'm interested to see who won the Super Bowl in 2090. <laughs> you know, I, I already asked him that, and uh, he says that actually football is not that popular in the future. It's more gaming and soccer. Wow. Yeah. Well, good luck on him. Thank you. Hey, I'm your counselor. Um, how are you doing right now? Good. So they put a new person on that case. No, they don't believe me. Well, I can't blame them. I gotta warn you. From being out back here in the time machine, my my mind's kind of jumbled up. So if I start stuttering, it's the time machine's messed me up a little bit. No, that's fine. That's fine. So I got your case right here, and I'm gonna just ask you a couple of short questions. Do you have a family that cares about you or is missing you right now? Yeah, I have a family. I'm sure they're worried about me, but I'm worried about them. I have two young kids at home. I'm sorry for the situation that you're in right now. Uh, you seem to be pretty okay being here. Do you have some place to stay? Yeah, I have a place to stay, eat, sleep, just until my company gets the time machine fixed and is absent back. I'd like to know more about this time machine. Uh, are you a secret service or is this a government project or anything like that? No, actually in, in my time, uh, the company I work for, it's called Time Vacations. They, they send people back in time machines for fun. They, they pay and it's, got, it's like a vacation. Mm. So how did you actually get like here? Like what happened? Well, uh, in the future, there are solar flares, and they wreak havoc on the uh, Earth's electrical grid. So, uh, there must have been some electricity still on the time machine when I was cleaning it. It just zapped you here? Yeah. Mm -hmm. what, what year was uh, time travel perfected? Uh, it was actually 2050. They, uh, they were working on cold fusion, and they actually discovered time travel. Oh. <clears throat> so I take it that now that they have these chips, that the future is just a no-cash society. Everyone can just pay for anything by using this chip. Yeah. Well, yeah. They they pay with the chip and the card. Hmm. I have a family. I have to go back. Hey, Dr. Neal, I got Carl's uh, file right here, and I was just going to say, nobody's seen him since last night. It's funny, I was just going over his file, and you know, maybe he just walked out. 
I'm having Fred check the security cameras right now to see if he did walk out. All right. He could have got zapped back to the future. I've got to admit, the story was pretty compelling. He's pretty normal except for the fact that he thinks he's from the future. You know, I think he actually believes he's from the future. I bet you he'd pass a lie detector test. I mean, I couldn't find the holes in the story or catch him with any inconsistencies. Well, except for the fact that he says he's from the future. Uh, well, I mean, at least not now. Don't tell me you actually believe him. I won't go that far, but psychologically, the man checks out. But I mean, the only thing he was missing was a device that could bring him back to the future. So could you really say that he was lying? Hey, I got some interesting footage I want you guys to see. Does it involve Mr. Radner? No, but you should like see this footage right here. Mr. Radner is in this? Yes, and I'm positive this footage has not been edited or doctored in any way. What? You're saying your department hasn't edited this video in any way? If my department touched or edited this footage in any way possible, they would be all right, just like that on the spot. We need to file a missing persons report. I'm not sure we do. What, are you saying you believe he's from the future? I don't think we will ever know. 